So our guests for this first half is, is from Retiree Advocate, and it's really important uh, to keep trying to lift them up because their election starts. Their ballots were mailed to all of the UFT RTC retirees today. And uh, and so you should be getting them in the, in the next couple of days. We also did a video up on our YouTube channel, which tells you with, we I did with Bobby Greenberg the other day, and we did email it out to most everyone, but I'll email it again and post it on our Facebook page to tell you exactly how to do that. And I think Gloria also did one, but I don't know if hers was opened yet to the public. So once that's done, we'll share both. Um, doesn't matter who's you watch, you want to watch both, but make sure you do it the right way because every vote counts. So tonight I want to say welcome to Bennett and Jonathan and the floor is yours. Hey, thanks, Mariana. You're welcome. Um, yeah, you know, we're here today because the election season is now starting. The ballots are being mailed out today. We're going to be receiving them in the next few days. And we're really here to talk to you about getting out the vote and the best person to do that is right here, our the retiree advocate candidate for assistant secretary of the retired teachers chapter, Jonathan Hollaby, who has uh, the amazing experience of being the 20 year chapter leader at the High School for American Studies at Lehman College, and who was also an 11 year member of the UFT executive board. <laughs> and who also has the incredible mind of a math teacher, whether you love that or hate that. And um, I'm just gonna turn the floor over to Jonathan to talk about this right now. Okay, go ahead, Jonathan. <laughs> okay, um, so it's to me. So I'm not here to give you deep political context. You're getting that from Marianne from the New York organization. You've got that from Bennett. You know what the campaign is about. Um, retiree advocate has never won a, a run a winning campaign within the retired teachers chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to get 10% of the vote. I'm saying we, we wasn't including me. I was just showing off. I've got my, I turned 60. I, I wasn't part of this organization last time around. Here I am. Um, jumped to about 30% when when this story broke, when the PSC leaked the information that the UFT would not share with its members. Um, and we've built, and we've built a lot. And between our efforts, uh, the New York City organization helped with, with us. We're running a slate of 300 delegates, more than we've ever run a full slate. We filled our slate before unity. There is more, and we, we know that. Um, yep. There's more enthusiasm for us than there is for unity. There's all these things going for us, but this is an entrenched caucus that has entrenched support. All of the work that we've been doing for the last few months has gotten us to the point where we have a chance to actually win this election. It's not to come close. The goal is not to embarrass Mulgrew, although I'm okay with that. The goal is actually to win. Because taking this chapter, this 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 chapter within the union, will begin to push back hard on what the union is able to do. It's part of a concerted effort, not only around Medicare, although that's central to our campaign, but other things. I said I wasn't going to talk about politics. I just started to. Um, I'll stop myself because nobody else jumped in yet, although they would have. <laughs> <laughs> the, the question is, how do we get the votes? First of all, if you're listening, the most important thing that you can do is to actually vote and don't say I'm going to vote. When that ballot comes, you open it up, you follow the directions in that beautiful video. There's two out there. Uh, Bobby did one. Uh, Gloria did one. You can watch. I think you just said we can watch them both. Um, follow the directions, check off retiree advocate and mail it. And the important thing that I want to say is when to mail it the same day you get it. Yeah, don't, yes. don't put it aside and say, get to it. That has to be met. Number one, number one way of getting out the vote is getting out your own personal vote. And that is not next week. It's not when I have a chance. You fill it out and you send it in right away. If you catch me and you say, do you have your, do you have your ballot? Have you not sent it in? The only way that's possible is if I picked it up at 5 p.m. and it's sometime, be sometime before the following morning. It's going straight in. That should be the same for everybody. Next thing you can do, same as all of us do, you can post on your Facebooks and things like that. And that's nice. It helps a little bit. It changes the mood. It's like putting on a nice candle, except it's a retiree advocate. Get rid of Mulgrew candle. <laughs> but, the most, but the most 
crucial part of getting out the vote that you can do if you're really committed, we're at the point where we can win this, is that we have to turn out our own votes and turn out the votes of everybody else who we know. This is not a 50-50 election where if you get a random person on the street and say vote, they might vote for one side or for the other. Unity, Mulgrew, right. his people are already voting for him. He's got fewer and fewer. The people on the street who haven't bothered to vote before, if they do decide to vote, they're going to be repulsed by Mulgrew or repulsed by Medicare Advantage or both. The question is not which side will they vote for. The question is, will they put their ballot in the garbage can or will they send it in? And that's where you come in. Because and that's important also to note, too, one second, is 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 putting is the mailing. So when the mail comes, it'll Norm just post it's just made a message. When it comes, it'll it'll say it's from AAA from from AAA. It's not going to say like from Unity or from UFT. So don't throw that envelope away because that is the envelope with the ballot. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can control one vote and every one of you should. There's no excuse not to. But every person that you can reach who's a New York City retired teacher or other 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 workers um, within the UFT who you can get to vote is a vote. And I know that people, I'm not going to call Bennett. Bennett's a nice guy. He's a friend. I know him. He's already voting. Don't think of the people who are going to support us. Think of everybody you used to work with. The guy, and I'm thinking of one right now, a real person who I never wanted to talk to again. He probably doesn't want to hear from me. My call to him is going to be, I never would have called you except. That's really it. You're allowed to use that line. I never would have called you except our health care is on the line, except our future is on the line. And a mass email doesn't do it. Phone call is really good if you can knock on a door, but nobody lives neighbors. Phone call is really good. A direct email is good. How many people do you know who you don't normally talk to or retired teachers? Make up your list now and figure out when you're going to call them, when you're going to, when you're going to email them. You have, uh, the ballots were mailed today. People, a few get them tomorrow. A bunch get them on Monday and Tuesday. By the end of the week, that's done. Ballots that haven't been voted on by then, have either been thrown out or set aside, you'll get a few, but you need to schedule for when you're going to reach people. Tonight, maybe. Tomorrow, Sunday, I don't know if you want to call on Mother's Day. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I, I will, you know, late enough I will, but you know, you might not want to. Monday, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, but you got to get it done. Every person that you reach is... This is not a 50-50, might vote for us, might vote for unity. Every person that you reach, you get to vote. 80, 90% of them are voting for us. And this is the place that all of us can make a tremendous difference. I'm going to stop there, but that's that's pretty much what I think. I've got like 100 people. I'm not going to call them all. I'm going to email a lot of them. But I've got like 100 people to reach, and I'm going to be doing that over this weekend. So I have a couple questions in the chat before uh, we move on. It says, Norm is actually saying retiree advocate will be holding a get out the vote Zoom rally on Monday at eight, joined by registering. And he put the link there. So you can also talk about that if you would like to. And then Ellen is asking about electronic voting, that she would hope that the UFT would be able to move to online voting, especially as more retirees are computer savvy Fewer and fewer large organizations are solely solely relying on snail mail. My reply to that was right now DOE is having an issue with electronic voting, and I'll get into that later as to not take up your time. But um, yeah, that's just something else to throw out there. So that's so far what I'm seeing. So go ahead, Mary. Bennett. Okay, so we would love to have accurate, good electronic voting. We would like to enfranchise the greatest amount of people that we possibly yeah. could. That's not the reality we're living in right now. We're living in the reality of snail mail return. So, yep. you know, so that's that. But I also want to get back to a point that Jonathan, um, you know, just made before about digging deep to find out 
who you can contact to get those people who are the plus ones, right? Not just you, but the plus ones and the plus twos that you can get. Because just yesterday I was talking to Jonathan and I, and I was like, Jonathan, you know, I've already contacted, you know, of course, everyone I know, I think, but there's like, I was there, there were like those six or seven people who I was like reserving who like, oh, you know, I'm just going to get to them at the last minute because I know they're going to vote for us, but I, you know, they're not that politically involved and I just want to remind them at the last minute kind of a thing. And, and Jonathan was like, really only six or seven. And I was like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but then, but then I looked through all my old emails <laughs> Right. I looked through all my old emails from when I was in service, you know, and like when I was like a chapter leader and I found like 20 more people who are now retirees who I could contact, you know, and and um, I'm in the middle of doing that. And I and I also I want to stress Jonathan's idea about the hierarchy of personal contact. Right. The how effective it is, how it's most effective when it's personal face-to-face -face contact, if that's possible, how it's then also effective if it's phone call where the person can hear your voice contact, and then third, email, but, and or any other, any combination of the above. So that's what, that's what I wanted so, to read. I have I a, a one second, uh, Jonathan. I have a question. In this election, are we counted as a complete human being or one third like the general election? So so we're it's only retirees voted voting. We're all, all counted as one. And the general election, by whole. the way, we're counted we're counted as as just a little bit less than a whole. So it's not it's not quite <laughs> we're a whole person. <laughs> one person, one vote in this election. So that Bennett's is awesome. point about, about the hierarchy, it's something I wrote about and about the email. Um, the email needs to be personal, which means if I'm writing to you, Marianne, and say you're a uft or it wouldn't be Marianne, this is really important, you got to vote. It's Marianne, I know I haven't talked to, to you in a long time. Um, I think the last time I saw you was the staff luncheon or something. Something personal, especially you're, you're reaching out of the blue, one line personal and then jump into it. Make people want to read it because they think it's to them. If it looks like a right. mass email, people will treat it like a mass email. Very good. Uh, Dan says, PSC and other unions are using unique access paper ballots that allow for online voting with access codes. AAA offers it already. UFT refuses to use it. Um, yeah, you know what? Though the time for complaining is past. The time is for voting. Use the method we have. It's mail and email. Deal with it, use it, do it. Um, another question, William Shenton Bennett, do you have a list of retirees? Will you be able to learn who has voted? If so, you can pursue the non-voters. No, we don't have any access to that. We don't have any access to the UFT membership list. We don't have any access to uh, you know, the UFT email list. That's a closely guarded secret that they have. Now, what all we have is what we have is is access to people who um you know who we have signed up throughout the years people who have listened to your um people who have like you know come into the fold of listening to whether it's your organization mariana or ours you know through the last few years who we've signed up and um we you know and and um and people who have also um come who we've also um, come into, who, who signed the petition for the referendum on um, on uh, the referendum for a vote on health care, you know, in the UFT, which got uh, 12,000 signatures so far, uh, many of them retirees. So we have, you know, a good, a good base of people we can contact, right. but we have no way of knowing, you know, you know, who is who, who is what. Um, we're going to, um, we're certainly going to inquire of the American Arbitration Association during the coming month, during the coming month of the election. 
uh, how many people have sent in um, their ballots because they do track that. And by the way, individuals can call the AAA, can call the American Arbitration Association and ask them after they've sent in their ballot, they can ask them, have you received my ballot? And yep. they will be able to tell you that they they will not be able, they do not know how you voted and they won't know that's in a secret ballot. But if you are concerned that your ballot was received, you can call them and ask them. I've done that in the past. Go ahead, Jonathan. I, I have a, a question. You have, we can't see it, but you have listeners and you've got something live going on. Yes. Can you ask your listeners how many of them can think of people that they can reach and how many people that they can reach? Um, Perfect. That's I a good question. About six. I can think of maybe near 100. What about listeners? Do we have people who are actually like coming up with people that they can reach to out to who they haven't? So for all of you that are in the UFT RTC, um, if you can put like, I don't know, a ballpark number, uh, 5, 10, 25, 30, whatever, of people that you know that are retired, that's the question, right? Um of how many that people that you could reach out to that would be in the RTC to say, hey, make sure you return that ballot. <laughs> give me, give me, uh, start posting a number of how many people you think you could email or call and ask to uh, make sure that they send that that ballot back. So that would be doing your own, basically um, getting out the vote. <laughs> and that's what we're asking. Yep, Harriet says she's starting to make the list. While they're thinking about that, um, a lot of people, Willie Grouper says 20. <laughs> Olga says seven. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of phone calls, but God bless you. Very good. <laughs> um, that there's a lot of people that are saying that they got the... Uh, that they got the unity flyer in the mail today. So we told them just send it back to them or you could send it or send the RA flyer back to them and make sure that you post it on uh, next door, which is a, an interactive neighborhood website and, or put it on patch or do both. I mean, just get it out there, put it on your Facebook page, email it to your friends. Um, a couple more people are saying, David Evans is saying 10, Steve Solomon is saying PS 77, 1000 at, at PS 39, at 32, 9 K. So that, that sounds like a lot of people. <laughs> Helen yeah. says 10 to 15. Um, Norm Scott also don't vote for some of the RAs, but just check the box on the first page, tear it off and don't send in the rest of the booklet. Yeah, so we're, it's encouraged for you because of the way they count the vote, not to just pick and choose individual people, but just to vote for the whole slate. There's over 300 people, right, on your on your slate. There's 300 people on your slate. So vote for the slate. That is, those are the ballots that they count first. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Unity has used slate voting to their advantage for 60 years. Yep. Many people, when they get a ballot, will see the slate and they'll also see the booklet of 300 other people or 600 other people on the ballot and they'll begin picking and choosing their friends, good people from both parties, but that's not effective. That's not going to get you the chapter leadership that you want. That's not going to get any change. Those individual votes aren't counted unless there's a tie vote within the slate voting. And um, that's statistically pretty much not going to happen. Jonathan, the math teacher, can correct me on that if he wants to. And um, so the important, so, so we're going to use, we need to use slate voting to counter that. We're going to use their Unity's own strategy of slate voting to beat Unity in this election. Got it. Except if you were planning to support Unity, then picking out individuals is probably a smart thing for you to do. Don't vote. <laughs> of course, you're probably not listening to this cast right now, but let, them, let them split their ballots. We should not. 
Um, so uh, Eileen ballots will be mailed out uh, were mailed out today. So you should receive the start to receive them in the next couple of days. As soon as you get it, send it back. Um, Anne Marie says my school group has about 100 people in it. And then I, I have posted that they not vote unity. Very good. Anne Marie. Um, so, oh, Marianne, if, if Anne yep. Marie can reach, if she can't reach each one of those 100 individually, if she can reach some of them individually, much more effective than the group thing. Um, the group thing is good. The individual contact really, really seals the deal a lot of the time. I know that's it is wild. Uh, Larry says, "How many UFT retirees are members of our organization? Do we have a number? Uh, we actually do. There is a there is there are several thousands of them uh, we in our database that we have been able to sort, and we did send them a specific email yesterday. If you did not get one, that means that your uh, Mailchimp has does not have you identified as a UFT person. But do not worry, I will eventually send this out like this weekend when I put this video up." Up to put that uh, that link in as well, so you will still get that video on on what to do. Um, Norm says that there's about seventy thousand retirees in the UFT chapter. I think actually, according to your last LM two, it was either eighty four or eighty nine thousand. So you're you're up there. Eighty five, I think. Um, Ellen says for folks in large retirement communities such as the villages, a personal contact. And passing out flyers at social events has been very effective. Where can they get your flyer if they do not have it already? They can get it on the retireeadvocate.org website. Click on, uh, I, there's a, click on the page called flyers. Actually, Marsha just uh, put it in the, in the chat. She just gave your Facebook page. Okay, great. Um, so or the, Facebook and, or, or the website page, just the regular website page as well. Yeah. You know, but yeah. So Anne said she didn't get the email. I'm assuming you mean that you didn't get it from me. I will go in and check your MailChimp, but I, like I said, I will send it out to the entire membership. I was trying not to send people that this doesn't affect too many emails as to not bombard them with stuff that doesn't necessarily pertain them to. But when I do this this weekend, I will ask them to send the email out, forward it to their friends who might be UFT retirees and, you know, get the word out that way. But I didn't want to send out too many. Um, yep, absolutely. So I want to kind of wrap this up because we're going to 840 and then I've got my next segment to do. So I'm going to let you make closing remarks and um, and then we'll keep moving. So go ahead. <laughs> so I'll make the less important remark. Go ahead. <laughs> the question about whether or not, and, and I know I wanted you to ask me and I talked about it anyway, whether or not we have a chance. Um, those of us who've been around, those of us who've been through retiree elections before, um, there's stuff that comes out from the RTC, but Unity has never paid for a mailing before. That stupid Mur stupid Murphy flyer. I don't mean Murphy is stupid, but that annoying flyer. First time. And they paid, you know, it's, what do they pay? We figured 50, 60,000. They didn't send it to everybody. I didn't get one. But they paid tens of thousands to send this out. They're worried. It's no good if they're worried, if they don't have a good reason. We need to make sure they have a good reason to be worried, which is we need to beat them. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to um, uh, jump on to that point. This is not a token election. This is a real election. We have a real chance yep. to win. Every vote counts. Don't throw away your vote. Encourage everyone you know to vote. It could make the difference. And... Um, and also, I also want to like say I know that I think that like after that we, after we're off that Mariana is having some, uh, you know, para, uh, para professionals who are also running in their like you know in service chapter election coming on, and one thing I want to sort of like a special message that I want to give to para professionals and let's say first of all I, I was a career district seventy five you know, teacher of kids with all kinds of, you know, disabilities and worked with paraprofessionals and occupational and physical therapists my whole career and was in a chapter, I was a chapter leader of a chapter that had 
over 250 members, like, you know, most of whom were paraprofessionals and related service providers. And the lack of equity in the pay that those people had compared to teachers was just, you know, a sin, if not a crime. But one of the great things that we've always had whether you're in the UFT or any of the other municipal unions, and no matter what salary you made, even if you didn't have salary equity, we always had retiree health care equity. We always had the same health care. I, I, you know, we always do that no matter no matter what you made when you were working, when you retired, you would have the same great health care equal equal with everyone else. And that's what's at danger now. That's what they're trying to take away from all of us now, that that parity, that equity, that health care. That's the yes. point I wanted to make. Well, thank you for that as well, because I also want to um, that, close with that same sentiment with you guys is in your question is, you know, people are saying, do you guys really have a chance? You absolutely do. And, and people said that about us when we started this two and a half years ago, you don't have a chance. You're fighting the city. You're fighting the unions. You'll never win. Well, look where we are. And two and a half years later, we had a fighting chance because we took that chance. And because we, we asked people to believe in us and fight with us and fight back. You, you'll never go into effect change on something that's wrong or being wrong to you unless you build a coalition and fight back. And uh, there were a few people that asked me to, to watch a show on TV, like I have time to watch TV. And they said, you need to watch a PBS series, Mr. Bates and the Postman. And I'm like, okay. And so I don't really watch TV and I didn't have that channel. So I literally bought the four episodes and I watched all four of them last night. And I was like, holy cow, that really is like our fight. Like if you watch it, Mr. Bates and the Postman, I'm not kidding you. This was really good. It's in, it's like, in, it's an English series, but they did what we did. They brought people together and they fought back. And you can do that too. They cleared their name. They got the truth out. This was like a crate. I'm not going to tell you the whole thing because I want you to watch it. But, but you do have a chance. Take that chance. And how I also know that is because when Gloria, like two years ago, said to me, we need to fight back on Michael Mulgrew and, and let's make sure we get the retirees to vote in the U in the UFT election. I was like, OK, but like we're juggling like all these court cases and all this crazy stuff. And and just the effect of the little time that we invested in this, we had an impact on the UFT election. Imagine if we put our minds to it. They're working hard to try to speak out for retirees, which is not happening today. So I commend you guys for doing that. I will help lift you up with that. I hope our, our members of our association will and help you get out the vote. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys have a great night. I'll see you again soon. Let me know what else we can do together to make sure that we are helping educate the retired teachers to get out the vote. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. All right, All right, guys. Have a great night. You guys can log off and I'm going to bring in the next group. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>